Hi guys, it's Adam from Rally Raid, and today we're going to be looking at suspension and sag settings, but more specifically aimed towards the 2022 Sierra F300 models. With the upcoming release of our suspension, I've had a lot of calls and emails from customers asking what is sag, how can they measure their sag, and how can they adjust it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to measure your sag, what can be done to adjust your sag if it's not correct, and why running the correct sag settings is important for your bike. When we're talking about sag, we're referring to the amount of suspension travel that's been used up by the bike in two different ways. Static sag is when the bike is compressing the suspension under its own weight alone, and rider sag is when you have a rider sitting or standing on a neutral position on the bike. To be able to correctly measure the sag, we need to take three measurements, so I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step on how to get these three measurements and then how to combine them to understand your current sag settings. To correctly measure the sag on this CRF300L, we need to take three measurements. All three measurements need to be taken from the same point. You need to find a repeatable point on the top of the rear plastics here that's directly above the rear axle. One way you can do this is by putting a bit of tape over the rear of your bike and just putting a little mark on there in pen. It doesn't matter if you measure from a slightly different place because you have racks or anything like that on it, as long as you repeat these measurements on your bike in the exact same place. So we're going to be going from this top point here down to the centre of the rear axle to measure. We're going to take our first measurement, which is going to be with the swing arm of the suspension fully extended. And to get this measurement, we're going to have to use a center stand or lean the bike over on the side stand to make sure that there's no compression in the suspension. The second measurement is going to be our static sag that we spoke about earlier. And that's when the bike is just stood up and compressing the suspension under its own weight alone. And the third measurement is going to be when we have a rider on the bike. So let's get a tape measure out and we'll see what the measurements are on this standard CRF300L. Okay, so we've got the bike up on a center stand now. Um, if you don't have a center stand, you can lean the bike over on the side stand and this will make sure that the swing arm is at its lowest point as well. Uh, you'll need someone to help you do this. There's no set rule on which side of the bike to measure on, but if you're measuring it using the side stand method, you're probably gonna go from the right hand side. Um, just for this video and the sake of filming, I'm gonna be doing it from the left. I've got my repeatable point mark there, so I know that the corner of my tape measure has to come to this point every time. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a slightly different measuring point, whether it's higher, you have a rack or something like that, because it's a relative measurement. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as what we're doing in this video, and that goes for all bikes. So I'm gonna take my first measurement by putting my tape measure on the corner of my repeatable point and straight down to the center of the rear axle, and that's 635 millimeters. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the bike off the center stand and let the bike compress under its own weight and take our static measurement. Okay, so I've got Ash at the front of the bike, balancing the bike. We've now removed the centre stand, and that means that we can take the measurement of the bike compressing the suspension under its own weight alone. So we're going to go up to our repeatable point here, make sure the tape measure is exactly where it was before, and down to the rear axle, and this time our measurement is 560 millimetres. So the next step is to get a rider on the bike, and then do the same measurement again. Okay, so we've got our rider on the bike. Um, Ash is a big guy, he's like, 95 kilos and about six foot four. So he's obviously gonna to be too heavy for the stock suspension, but we're gonna go ahead and take a measurement anyway. So we're going to our repeatable point on the rear fender and down to the center of the rear axle and that's 480 millimeters. So now we can put all these numbers together and then we can calculate our sag amount in both static and rider sag. And then we can look at what we can do to adjust that and make sure we're running the right amount of sag on our bike. Now we have our measurements, it means that we can understand and calculate the amount of sag that this bike is using. The CRF300L has a rear wheel travel of 250 millimetres, so we can start to calculate what percentage of that 250 millimetres is being used under both static and rider conditions. To get the number, you need to remove the static measurement from the fully extended length, and that leaves us with 75 millimetres or 30%. And then for the rider weight, again, remove that from the fully extended length, and that left us with 155 millimetres or around 62%. For off-road and adventure riding, the general consensus of sag measurements are 10% static sag and 30% rider or race sag. At Ash's weight of 95 kilos, you can see here on the standard bike, is well over double the amount that's needed. This means that he's using over half the capabilities of the shop just sitting on the bike alone, leaving very little suspension left to soak up the terrain he has to deal with. Unfortunately, this has a pretty detrimental effect to the handling of the bike, um, not just in rough terrain, 
Uh, no amount of preload that we can put on that OEM spring is going to bring these into anywhere near optimal numbers for someone of Ash's weight. So we're going to move over to the Rally Raid bike fitted with our front and rear suspension kits and see what we can do on that. Okay, so next up we have our Rally Raid test bike. Um, this has got a host of Rally Raid parts on it, including our front and rear suspension kits that are soon to be released. Um, on this one, we've actually got a prototype preload adjuster as well, which is going to come into play when adjusting your sag as well. So we're going to get Ash set up on this bike um, and see what his measurements are on the aftermarket suspension as well. So again, we're going to repeat the same process that we did before. Uh, again, it doesn't matter if we have a slightly different measuring point on a different bike, as long as we're retaining that same measuring point every time we do the measurements. So let's go ahead and get our extended, our static and our rider sag measurements on this bike. Same as before, the first step is to get our fully extended measurements. I've got it up on the center stand as well. Um, there's no weight on the rear wheel of the suspension so we can get our measurement. I've got a rear rack on this bike, so I'm gonna to go to a slightly different place and that means our measurement's gonna come out different as they did on the other bike. But as I said, it, it's all relative. So as long as you measure from the same point on each bike, that's absolutely fine. So on this bike, we've got a measurement of 663 millimeters fully extended. So again, I'm gonna be going from my repeatable point on the rear rack here, and then I'm gonna be going down to the center of the rear axle, and I've got 634 on that measurement. So next, we'll get Ash on this, and we'll see what his rider sag is. So our final measurement with Ash on the bike is 563. So we're gonna go ahead to the computer now, pop all these measurements in and calculate the sag. Um, and then we'll see what can be done if those sag settings aren't quite right. Now we have Ash's measurements on the Rally Raid test bike with the aftermarket suspension. We can then go and calculate the new static and rider sag. As you can see by doing the same calculations, Ash is still slightly over at 29 millimeters of static sag and 100 millimeters of race or rider sag. This leaves us at 12% and 40% respectively, and we need to try and get these down to 10% and 30%. To do this, we're gonna add more preload to the spring. This is gonna compress the spring and give a slightly firmer end result. Adjusting the preload on most shocks means that you have to turn the preload ring with a tool. Obviously on the smaller bikes, it's quite hard to get a tool in there. Um, this prototype hydraulic preload adjuster means that just simply, simply turning this knob here, you can increase and reduce the preload on the shock through means of a high pressure hydraulic ram that compresses the spring further. So what we're gonna do is give this a few turns and we're gonna retake Ash's rider sag measurement and hopefully that should be bang on then. So we're gonna go ahead and take our last measurement now with rider sag after adjusting the preload and we've got bang on 585 millimeters, which is the perfect amount for Ash's size and weight, giving us the optimum 30% sag uh, in the suspension, which is 75 millimeters in this case on this bike. Um, so that's as easy as it is to set the sag and check the sag yourself in your own workshop or garage. You just need someone to help you and a tape measure. Like I said earlier, there's a few cool tools out there that let you do it by yourself, um, but you might as well do it with the tools you have to hand. So one of the issues that riders are facing when they get their sag settings sorted out, especially on these bikes, is the bike essentially lifts up. Because you're losing so much sag um, on the OEM shock and the OEM spring, the riders often feel quite confident and flat-footed on the bikes, but when you run the correct sag settings, it essentially might, makes the bike taller than it ever was. Although you're using the same stroke shock, um, that loss of huge amounts of sag means that the bike is sitting, when it's upright, far taller than it was before, and then people struggle to touch the floor um, or feel confident off-road. Um, and that's one of the reasons why in our upcoming suspension release, we've got the level one and the level two. This bike's a level two, um, and that means that it's a full stroke 250 mil shock. The same as the OEM, but you've got the correct spring um, and sag setting. So it essentially makes the bike taller than it initially was, despite using the same stroke shock. And the level one is something aimed at people that like the height of the bike um, with the saggy OEM shock. So that's 40 mil lower uh, than the level two shock. And it leaves the bike feeling more or less the same in terms of height that it did in the OEM shock. But obviously you can retain those optimum sag settings by having a choice of spring rate and being able to adjust it as well. At Rally Raid, John's getting ready to take this bike to Portugal. He's gonna be doing some Tech Portugal on this bike and I'm getting the BMW G310GS ready. I'm off to Spain in two weeks um, with the Shoot and Ride guys on the G310GS. 
uh, and we're going to be doing some of the Spanish Tet and I think some of the South France Tet as well. Um, so I hope you found this useful. If there's any more questions um, or if I didn't explain anything quite right, uh, just drop a comment below and I'll probably argue with you and have to do another video. So thanks for watching.